Hello everyone. So it has been four days since the last time I posted a video on YouTube. Reading the novel, the historical novel called The Twinkling Star Way. Uh, and today I come back with this series. Um, I have still this, this thick part, you see. So hopefully I will finish it this week. I will try to read more uh, this weekend. All right, so now let's start. A big crowd had gathered intelligently and ball. Intelligently, Ang Bo threaded his way before the cortege and his himself behind a big tree on a small hill, from where he could observe the cortege. Without being seen by anyone, he was first of all impressed by two brilliant yellow parasols, different from those he had often seen at the village Jin, Jinny Temple. What kind of silk or, bro or brocade could reflect the sun rays and shine like gold, like gold clouds in the hori horizon at uh, twilight? Hang Bo guessed that the two persons seated under these parasols were the emperor to the left and uh, the queen mother to the right of the ceremonial high table. Two great chamberlain, chamberlain stood behind the emperor, with that hang lurking behind the queen mother. Dozens of other parasols of various colors were arranged according to the different honorific degrees of the princes and the dignitaries. Hundreds of guards and soldiers, framed by their officers, surrounded the place. Ang Bo was amazed by the elephants, horses, standards, flags, swords, halberds, and multicolored spears. The scenery actually dazzled him. He managed, however, to distinguish the banner bearing the emblem, emblem and title of Prince Bing Yin. Leda must be orancent there. Near the prince was a mandarin in full civilian dress, but with a sword by his waist, an armed civilian. How bizarre. And Ledam, wasn't he actually an officer? Was this man Ledam? The prostrations of the provincial officials before the emperor finally ended. The games organized to, maintain, uh, to entertain the people began from the demise of Emperor Lê Thái Tông until today. Ten long years has elapsed, and Long King had not experienced these activities. That was why there were a great number of games that day, and the par participants parti uh, and the parti participation of the population was most ardent. Cock fighting, wrestling, tug of war, lion dances, unicorn dances, and dragons, dragon boat racing. But the emperor was indifferent to all entertainments. In the capital, there were hundreds more games and festivities. Only the dancing and songs of the village of Zimo truly interested him. He had never seen nor heard this item. Dancers and singers were young men and women. Uh, the boys with their naked torsos wore turbans forming a knot in the shape of a, hat, a hatchet, while their red bells each carried an axe at their side. The girls wore dresses with knotted flaps, long light green belts, and rose silk scarfed on their left shoulders. Hand in hand, they danced in a ring and sang in chorus. Then they divided themselves into two groups and formed two rows, facing one another. When the boys were dancing, the girls clapped their hands and vice versa. 
The vigorous, clean-cut figures of the boy were in perfect harmony with an un undulating and supple gestures, gestures of the girls, the bass, tenor, and soprano, with low-pitched, then sharp, warm, then smooth voices, intermingled, evoking splendid rural landscapes, expressing the pure and simple sentiments of poetic pastoral life. The child emperor's heart was won over by the performance, forgetting that he was emperor and in the full costume of the dragon, he beat Tam on his armchair and moved his lips to the, the company of the songs. When the dance ended, he told his mother, your august nest, I should like to see this den again at the imperial theater of your of our palace. Please agree to my request. I implore you. The queen mother had not yet answered when that pain advanced his head and whispered, "Your organist, your organist, your augustness, your augustness." When I was still humbled and poor, I lived with ordinary people on the banks of the Ma and the two rivers. I know this dance. It has an ugly name. Ri Ren, a commonplace and free, frivolous play for poor peasants, for the purpose of amusing themselves in their, uh, in their leisure. It is ex ex exceedingly Unworthy for his majesty, the emperor to see, this will do harm to the pure, the purity and nobleness of the dragon's soul. Immediately, the queen mother ordered the cessation of the dances, although she knew that her child was pleased with them. In the distance, Angbo was ob observing the emperor. He found him taciturn. He had lost. He had lost. His vivacity and jovial, jovial, joviality. The dignitary in charge of protocol came to invite him to go and celebrate ceremonies at the temple of the defunct emperors, but he did not move. The two great chamberlains did all that what they could to assure, assure, assuage him. Then they carried him to the coach. I'm almost going to say that the emperor was too obstinate. But with such a mother, he thought, how could the son not be stubborn? The, imperi the imperial cottage began to move. I'm thought that running before it, uh, he would be detected and in great danger. So he'd better mix up with a crowd at the end of the procession. Half a mile from the temple, the mob muddled together. The loudspeakers ordered, the people are forbidden to approach the sacred place of the defunct emperor's tombs. Early in the afternoon, the emperor and the queen mother were seen together under a yellow parasol. He was no longer solemn and has and had recovered his natural, spontaneous na naively. He was likely he was lively talking with his mother. You, uh, you Augustness, will you allow me now to go to that hill and see the millenary uh, banyan, the perimeter of the of which is longer than ten arm spans? Please ask the mandarin. Uh, archivist to tell me a story. Who planted it and when? It is much taller than that found in front of the temple of the emperor's ancestors. The damsels of the palace have uh, told me many mysterious stories about the banyan on that hill. I should like to know all about it. The Mandarin archivist had written an article about the tree he started reading it to the emperor behind the queen mother. That hang pretended to close his eyes and to pay no attention to what was happening. But he did not miss any words read to the young emperor. 
he decided that even in the story of the Banya, he was up to his task of being the ears and eyes of the queen mother. Realizing the rascally attitude of that time, the archivist felt his inspiration cut off. What an odious man, he thought. Your eyes and ears are but those of a venomous snake. You are always splitting hairs. You see white or black, you hear a low voice and you say it is shrill. Wherever you go, a, cast, a, a catastrophe is anticipated. In fact, the catastrophe is looming. Even the tree having neither soul nor con conscience cannot escape the criminal tongue of this rascal. Stopping the reading, that hang impudently said, your augustness, in my uh, superficial view, the court should order the local population to cut down the banyan on the hill. It is better to use it as fire, uh, firewood because its roots and branches have long hatched the, ger the germs of high treason. The, ger the germs that Hank was alluding to the Chinese character which could be previously read at the beginning of the insurrection against the Northern ruler on the leaves of the Banyu. According to the celestial will, Lela will be the emperor and Yen Chai his subject. At the initial time of uh, the uprising, the suffering was immense. To mobilize the people to unite under the banner of Lela, these characters were written with blood on the trunk and leaves of the banyan. Ants and other insects ate the blood and left holes on the bark and leaves fallen on the ground. Representing these characters, which could be read as if on paper, which I had been put to death, but his name remained in that legend and the banyan. This fact was that time's motive when he uttered his vicious words, and the queen mother agreed to this proposal. Woodcutters with axes, hatchets, and saws were summoned. An old man emerged from the crowd, fear fearlessly advances and calmly addressed the queen mother in a stilly voice. Your Majesty, your, your Augustness, on behalf of the local population, I beseech you not to cut down the banyan. Why? She retorted with, an, with a sour grin. Can you read? The old man nodded, then read loudly the words on the trunk of the banyan. Your Augustness, the people all over the country know these words expressing the celestial will. A child can recite them easily. And you challenge a dirty-minded scholar like me? The queen mother grew pale. Her left eye winked, winked, winked repeatedly. She restrained her, her rage. Well, but you should know that each thing has its time. This sentence has had undeniable value when the founding emperor began the war of liberation. Now that the traitor Nguyen Chai has been punished and become the hellish phantom, it is reasonable or legal to keep a millinery tree bearing his name before the eyes of everyone of the present and future generations. Moreover, on the top of a hill, what then of the laws of the country and the authority of the emperor? Your hair is already white and you still haven't understood the rules of life yet. The officials and the inhabitants of this village would have done better if they had removed the banyan before the arrival of the imperial cottage. What do you say? The old, what do you say? The old man replied calmly. The more one's age is advanced, the more one understands the rules of life and the significance of events, and the more one teaches goodness and truth to one's children. Yet, 
there are people who push others and ob oblig uh, oblige them to become malefactors and criminals and to commit quite unreasonable, unreasonable acts. Nguyen Chai has done a great service to the fatherland and the, re the reigning dynasty. And it would be utterly impossible to wipe out his name, even when all the trees, all the forests are destroyed. Everywhere, his proclamation of victory over the war is still transmitted, and his name is still at the end of the text he had written and carved on the Vinh Lang Steel. You have just celebrated ceremonies at the temple of the defunct emperors. Have you not seen this text and his name? Would you think of demolishing the mausoleum, the temple, and the seal when the court itself has not yet given an order to do so? And would the court have the courage to issue such an order? What use is there in changing the check into locks if it has only this name on its bark? Listening to these words, dazzling with a reason, loyalty and nobleness, nobleness of soul, all the assistances were exceedingly rejoiced. Rejoiced. Leave it with anger, the queen mother shouted. Girls, arrest him, execute him at once. Somewhere in the crowd, Angval, with great emotion, attentively followed each word and each gest uh, gesture of his master. The man who had objected to the idea of the queen mother was old Cao, who had accepted from Ledan and Cao Yue the responsibility of seeing to the education of Enlo. Formerly, he was a renowned sculptor. Many places, pagodas, temples, and various monuments at the capital jealously preserved his fine statues. When his younger brother Kao Sudang was killed in the construction of the Baoyan Pagoda, he was fed up with everything and left Tang Long to lead an adventurous life, up hills and down dells. He converts in sculptures, corporation, corporation did their utmost to persuade, to persuade him to remain in the capital and to continue his profession of emeritus artist. In vain, he traveled widely everywhere. He visited historical monuments and picturesque sites. Pictures kit, picture kit, picture kit, okay, sites and offered his purse to charities. The day when he uh, the day when he called on his nephew Gao Yue in concern, he was informed of the situation of Fat Bi Mun and Ang Bo. The great master Nguyen Chai has a son. What good luck! New hope was kindled in his heart. Wouldn't the ancient disciples be concerned over the education of Ang Bo? But all the traces of the mother had been wiped, uh, wiped out, and the existence of the son was totally unknown. Unknown, unknown. He tapped on the shoulder of Gao Ye. We have been able to bend the eyes of the rascals. You should bring back and go here. Venerable uncle, answered Gao Ye. He's joined hand, uh, he, he, his joint hands raised before his visage, visage has habitual, habitually done by monks. Relocation is possible, but what of, what of his education? The walls have ears, and Engwa cannot live with me or Lida. The old man burst out laughing. That's not a problem. Bring him to Lamping, and I will take charge of his education. Let me help you. Returning to the ancient capital, he led a, a sedentary life. Ang Bo was the only student whom he loved 
as much as the sun. He was calm and impassive in the face of death. Who could know the tempest in his heart? For the last three years, during the day, he had given lectures to Anh Bo. At night, he walked on a statue of Nguyễn Trãi. He had just completed the sculpture of the day before, so he had kept his promise to Cao Yue and lay down. From now on, visitors to the two Anpagoda would see the effigy of the great master. Those who had not seen him alive would be able to contemplate through this statue the portrait, the portrait of a man whose greatness would live through the centuries. All breath might last without regret. The adolescent at last is capable of flying with his own wings. I have nothing more to teach him. I had intended, I had intended to raise the matter to lay down, to bring him to the capital so that he might continue his study. And now I am condemned to death by this bitch. The sun shot forth rays of a fire. Sweat purred his forehead, impregnating his eyebrows, his mustaches, his mustache, his mustaches. He wanted to raise his arm and to wipe his face with the sleeves of his vest, but stood immobile like a rock, had held high, and tenderly looked at the villagers by way of a last farewell. Anh Bo did not take his eyes off his master. Thousands and thousands of needles seemed to stab his heart. He had never seen such a heart, heart trending, heart heart-trending spectacle. He had never been in such a tragic situation. I cannot in any way abandon my master. I must rush out, cling to him, protect him against all the murderers, and protest against this wretched woman. Surely they will cut me down, and I am happy to die with him. A towering rage overwhelmed him. His heart beat like the hammer, and his blood boiled. He stood up on tiptoe, and a firm hand clutched his shoulder like a vice and spun him to the ground. He heard whispers, keep calm, let me settle it. Angbo raised his eyes. A certain re resentment told him who this Mandarin was. Rather lay down. Right away, he understood and kept quiet, as if nothing had happened. Ledam turned his back and went to kneel down in front of the Queen Mother. Your Augustness, in all, your Augustness, in all this region, it is well known that this old man is a crazy scholar, having excessively damaged his mind by reading books. The villagers standing near him you, uh, unanimously raised their voice. His Excellency, the Mandarin attack, uh, attach, has said this correctly. Our poor scholar has a quite unbalanced mind. To eliminate him is too easy, Ladam continued. Your Augustness should consider. He lowered. He lowered he lowered his voice and expounded his ideas. She listened inattentively, but first became serious, thoughtful, then anxious. Then she nodded her consent. Her consent. However, she winked to that Tang to ask his view. The latter, facing the imposing air of Madame and considering his recent exploits of having captured the enemy admirer felt a fearful chill. He no longer had the courage to continue his deny, denigrations. He became courteous cot, and ready to agree. Your Excellency's position is in accordance with my judgment, 
smashing a bee may provoke a wall, a wild swarm, and one may be stung all over the body and have painful swellings, like the elimination of a man having a black head and red blood. He was proud to have this short phrase, to which he gave a profound significance. However, to release the old man is to set free a tiger into the jungle. Another ruling is possibly more appropriate. Your augustness, the attic of uh, the attach knows well the origin and the health of, uh, of this madman. We had better entrust this affair to him. Your augustness should give full power in this affair to his excellency. I agree. She listed less, she list lessly repeated. You have full responsibility in this affair, madam. She stood up, walked to the group of 12 woodcutters and turned her chin to that time. Let them start the felling of the tree. The first strokes of axes, old cow fixed his, eye, his eyes on the poor Benny. He gazed a thick brownish, sap oozing out of the wounds of the tree, as if blood were being shed from his heart. The condemnation to death had not troubled him. The escape from death had not moved his moved him, because to live is to provisionally exist on earth. To die is to shift to the next world, to the original state, only to return to one's home. Moreover, man dies only once. To live long or to die prematurely comes to the same thing. Why keep one's mouth sealed? Then, at the top of his voice, he remembered the poems of Nguyen Chai, holding his head high. Crows and star starlings flew up, frightened and tumultuous. Tumultuous, knowing that their retreat was lost forever and regretfully skimming around their nest. Old cow, the man armed with axes, the birds, formed a trembling image in the tearful eyes of the villagers and the inhabitants of Lumping. The verses of Nguyen Chai scanned by the deep voice of old cow reached their ears like the wishes for a dream of the future. Old cow recited one of the Vietnamese poems of the great masters that they all knew well. One has so much leisure. Leisure. When the sun is about to set, one takes a walk, counting one's steps hand in hand. One contemplates the, bound, the boundless world. Birds are flying above. Clouds know mountains low and high. Winds know how trees are resisting or receding. The country remains the same in the course of time. The moon remains intact through, uh, through ages. All things are known in their true colors. Only a human heart is excessively rare. The queen mother returned to her place. Lest the despotic woman might have a new idea. Ladam untied his silk belt, bound the arms of old cow behind the back and pretend to bawl. Quicken your steps, mad old, a mad old man. I'll throw you into a cell and give you only half a ration of food. We'll see whether you still have the strength to recite the poems. Angval could not understand the whole complicated situation, but with absolute confidence in Leydan, he remembered what his brother had hastily told him in a whisper, prepare the urgency to follow me to the capital. He was beside himself with joy to go to the capital. It was his dream. However, joy came with misfortune. The strange nightmare re reappeared. 
in the capital, in the capital, living with evil figures. To have them inside every day? No, no, I don't want it. But I have responsibility towards my master, who will also be brought to the capital. So I must go to the capital all the same. In a hurry, he returned to the house of the master and waited. So that is the end of the part for today. There are some new words that I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And I will check it later. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye and good night.